Hey there, everybody. Welcome back. We are doing 8.2. 8.2 is on simplifying radicals. Uh, we're going to start with talk about the principal root of n, the principal nth root, I should say. I said it wrong first. Uh, the principal nth root has the same sign as what's on the original. So how do I want to say this? Uh, to, to motivate this, notice that negative 2 squared equals 4, and so does 2 squared. So if we do the square root of 4, it could equal 2 or negative 2. But by the principal nth root, the principal nth root has the same sign as the original. This was positive. We're going to use this one. So we're going to ignore the negative 2. Both are true. And you, if you're doing engineering and stuff like that, it becomes very necessary. But if we're just going, a lot of circumstances don't have negative numbers. If you're dealing with problems in real life, you don't need a negative number for a lot of things. Like distance is never negative and things like that. Length isn't negative. Time isn't negative. Lots of things. Uh, this stems off of the nth root of a to the n is, if n is even, the nth root of a to the n, this kind of makes it like the absolute value of a. That's what we had up here. This is the nth root or the square root, even though it's not shown, of two squared. It also applies to the square root of negative 2 in parentheses squared. Both of those, when we square them, order of operations is do the square first, then take the square root. This becomes positive 4, and this is positive 4. And then we take the square root, we get the 2. It's either, if we just use the absolute value sign, it addresses not having to worry about a negative. If n is even, we don't have the same, or if n is odd, we don't have the same problem. The nth root of a to the n is a. Now, unless you're going into engineering and stuff like that, we're going to simplify this a bunch for most uses. Uh, to simplify, assume variables are positive. Unless, we unless they don't give us a variable, if they give us a number, we got to deal with the number. But if they give us a variable, we're going to assume the variables are positive which means like treating the A as positive two rather than negative two, and then we don't need the absolute. And this becomes one rule. One rule. The nth root of A to the N is A.
Uh, easy way to think of that, see that is the same power and radical or index cancel. Uh, some quick examples. We're going to do the negative square root of x to the 8. This is a 2 system. Thing on the outside. This isn't a good example because we haven't done the product property yet. Let's let's get to the product property first before I get some examples. Product property. Uh, n or, or the nth root of a times b equals the nth root of a times the nth root of b. This is kind of like saying the square root of 36 equals the square root of four times nine equals the square root of four times the square root of nine, which is two times three, which is six. And that's what the square root of 36 is, six. Okay, we're going to use that combined with uh, this nth root idea to simplify some, some crazy stuff going on. Now let's do that negative square root of x to the 8th power. There is an invisible index of 2. So what I'm going to do is write this as a bunch of twos. This is two plus two plus two plus two. And that is, we separate it out, x squared times x squared times x squared times x squared. I think you could have jumped straight to here, but for those that aren't following what I was doing, I want to make sure I show it. And now I can split it up into a bunch of these, all multiplied together. This was that product rule we were talking about. And now the index matches the power on each of those. So the radicals and the power cancel out. This is just negative x times x times x times x, which is negative x to the fourth. Some people like doing it that way. I think personally, I think it's much quicker. To recognize that this is x to the eighth power to the one half which is eight times one half, which is four. A lot less writing. But a lot of people don't like working with fractions and this doing this radical bit awards, uh, avoids working with fractions. This was not hard fraction work though. All right, uh, let's give you another one to take a crack at. Why don't you guys try the fifth root of x to the 20, y to the fifth power. So if you do it the way I said, or we, we did up here, this is x to the fifth times x to the fifth times x to the fifth times x to the fifth. 
times are y to the fifth. And you can do each of these individually. So I got four of the fifth root of x to the fifth and one fifth root of y to the fifth. This is x times x times x times x times y, which is x to the fourth y. The quicker way is treating this as a fraction. X to the 20 times one fifth, y to the five times one fifth, and we get x to the fourth y. Both methods work. Here's another one for you. Cube root of negative 27, a cubed, b to the sixth power, c to the ninth power. This becomes a little bit easier if we recognize that negative 27 is negative three cubed. And avoiding even doing this part right here, we said the nth root of a to the m was a to the m over n. This is negative three to the three over three, a to the three over three, b to the six over three, c to the... Much easier way. I should have said that up above. That's a one, one, two, and three. Negative three A, that should be a B right there. B squared, C cubed. Now we'll make it a little more complicated. Let's do the square root of a cubed b to the fourth, c to the fifth power. Now this has got an in index of two. This is easier if we break up the inside into things that are multiples of two. So this is gonna be a squared times a b to the fourth is fine. We're going to do c to the fourth times c. Everything that's got a power, a multiple of two, can we can do the exponent thing with. We're going to do a to the two over two, b to the four over two, c to the four over two. And everything that didn't, we are going to leave inside the radical, A and C. Uh, this is like saying, writing this as A squared, B to the fourth, C to the fourth, times square root of AC, separating it out first. We go there, and then we have a, B squared, C squared, square root of AC. That's called simplifying. So a radical is simplified. If Uh, one, no factors inside. 
have a power greater than the index. And that's what we just addressed right there. Three, four, and five were greater than two. Uh, this has got a power of one. This has got a power of one. The index here is two. Uh, and now they don't have it on the inside. Uh, two, I'm going to say 2A and 2B. They're kind of related. Uh, no fractions inside the radical. And 2B is no radicals in the denominator. Uh, we will address this when we do, we'll do this when we do division. I think it's 8.5. So let's do another example. We got the square root of 28 x to the seventh y cubed z. Well, we're going to start off. We're going to break up the 28. 28 is 4 times 7, which is 2 times 2. So we've got 2 squared times 7. And since I've got an index, invisible index of 2, I'm going to break this up where these are divisible by 2. This is going to be x to the 6th power times x, y squared times y, and then z. I can put all the ones that have an exponent in their own. leaving behind, this goes in a radical that's not gonna get simplified. And this first part simplifies. This is two to the two over two, x to the six over two, y to the two over two. Then we have square root of seven x, y, z. Finally, we have two x cubed y, square root of seven X, Y, Z. This step is skippable. With practice. Okay. Let's do one more for this video and we'll call this section a wrap. You guys try cube root of negative 64 x to the fifth power y to the 10th power. Give that bad boy a try. It might help to do 64 is eight times eight. This is two times two times two. So is that. So this is really two to the sixth power. Or if I group it in terms of three, I've got negative four cubed. We're going to separate the x up into x cubed. And what we would have left over is x squared. We'll do y as multiples of 3. y to the ninth power is a multiple of 3. And that would give us 1y left over. So these two don't match the exponent. 
we're going to have an x squared y in there. And then we've got this cancels this. So we've got negative four. The three cancels the three here. We've got x. And we've got nine over three, which is y cubed. Or you can split this up first. Well, you do the exponent thing, which is good until you get, get skilled at it. <clears throat> and that'll be it for this video. Peace.